There we are. So so what is training periodization and why you need to know about it? So periodization is defined as the long-term cyclic structuring of training and practice to maximize performance to coincide with important competition. So basically training periodization is, is, has been used especially for sports uh, for you know, the last maybe even 100 or more years, for, especially for Olympic level athletes, uh, competitive athletes. And um, the goal with periodization is to maximize your gains while also reducing your risk of injury and the stallness of the protocol over the long term. So it's both um, a combination to, you know, make sure you don't plateau and also to um, reduce the risk of injury. And basically, as I said, it's the cyclic, uh, long-term cyclic structuring. So what that means that basically, instead of doing the same thing all around, um, the, the training basically uh, changes but it's not a complete random change, but it's, um, it's a structured uh, cyclic uh, change, basically. So an example um, of periodization is a linear periodization, um, which I'm gonna bring here as an example, because it's the easiest to understand, basically, and is also one of the most uh, used uh, so linear periodization, again, you know, linear, um, it has three or even four phases. And for example, as you can, we can see here, um, phase one, strength power workout, where we're using heavy weights for uh, a low rep range. So two to six reps. Um, as the name says, this is to maximize strength and power uh, gain. So obviously to get stronger, um, gaining strength and we need to use obviously heavy load uh, but we do it for our um, low reps then you can move into a second phase which, which is hypertrophy and you will lose moderate weight and a rep range that goes between 8 and 12 reps to then go into a third phase which is is called endurance strength workout uh, where we're going to use light weights and the rep range is between 15 and 30 plus. So the benefit of using this form of periodization are an overall development of multiple qualities that are important to performance, as well as a way of being able to focus more on the general overall training effects of strength development. So, especially like, um, strength-based sports like powerlifting and weightlifting um, there is still lots of people that uses this uh, peri linear periodization so they will for example training uh, four weeks focus on heavy weights low reps then they will go into four weeks of hypertrophy workout with the moderate weight and uh, 8 to 12 rep range and so on so even you know high level athletes they still use something like that and again the benefits are, um, you know, injury prevention and making sure that you train the overall aspects of your body. Because if we were to train just heavy weights all the time, low reps, um, you know, we go, we get strong, of course, but that could lead to issues. For example, um, injury prevention because. When you train low, uh, high, high weight, low rep, basically your tendons and um, just in general joints, <laughs> oh, bless you, don't get um, much of a workout. So they tend to be underdeveloped compared to the muscles. And then that can lead to injuries, for example. Uh, also your, um, you know, your metabolic um let's say metabolic endurance, the ability to, to use certain um, energy um, um, systems 
it's not going to be efficient because you never go above a certain threshold. And actually, I should have I should have made a um, another slide for that. But basically, we need to keep in mind that we also have well, let's say two different muscle types. Um, type one and type two. Type two. Um, type one is a is a muscle fiber that it's probably let's say that the endurance muscle fiber. So we use those muscle fibers for um, obviously long duration endurance work, while we use the type two for more of a strength and power uh, movements and workouts. So it makes sense that you know in the same muscle we got two different. Uh, fiber types and we want to work both right um so you know that's one benefit of using periodization and using different rep ranges and different loads throughout the year and perhaps throughout the weeks um one thing to add is that this is good to to know um but for example, and you will notice this in the workouts that you know I provide, um, I will usually try to combine multiple qualities at time. Um, so for example, in the same workout, you might do a heavy uh, low rep movement on, for example, like a compound movement. And then going into a more of a moderate uh, weight, eight to twelve reps uh, for a batch of it. So, again, I'm using the same principles, uh, just in a different way, rather than go like weeks, four weeks on one um, quality, and then four weeks on another quality. I'm combining the same qualities in the same workouts. Um, reason is. Preference, really, um, and again, periodization is is just the concept. Um, but there are different ways to periodize. Uh, there is also another way that could be doing like a heavy workout on Monday, and then do an apertrophy workout on Wednesday, and then do an endurance strength workout on Wednesday, uh, which is is a bit of um, is called undulating. Um, Periodization. So you will use the three different uh, approaches throughout the week, and then you know repeats week by week. Um, so you know there is no right or wrong. There is uh, preferences, and you know in my in my opinion, using different qualities in the same workout is what uh, I prefer the most. What I found has been working most uh, well. Um, but again, it's just preference really um, and observation. So one of the reasons why I wanted to, to do this presentation, um, especially today, is because, of course, in UK, we are um, during, you know, we're in, into the second lockdown. And um, most people will be you know, training at home with limited equipment, perhaps limited weight selection, and even just body weight. Um, so as I show you, you know, even linear periodization and uh, strength training sports and stuff like that, there is a four weeks, six weeks, eight week cycle where you actually want to train at uh, light loads for, you know, 15 and 30 plus reps, okay? Which, to be honest, is something that I've probably never done before myself. Um, I normally stop at 20. But, you know, there is still a benefit of going these higher reps for endurance strength. So that's a quality that, you know, we should be training. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit more about that because, of course, when we are in the gym, we tend to always go towards the heavy lifting. Um, and, you know, it's a bias of mine as well, uh, but something that I I got better with the time, and uh, I think I really nailed down during the last lockdown. Um, 
just see how I would benefit from you know a low low load high rep training compared to you know trying to go heavier and heavier each week uh, which is what I normally do when I'm at the gym um, so I went and uh, took some scientific research which you can see here so it is a the effects of low versus high load resistance training on muscle strength and hypertrophy in a well-trained man. And, um, you know, loads of uh, blah, 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 blah. But the conclusion is that uh, high and low load strength training perform unilaterally, blah, 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 loads of scientific terms, but basically yields equal increase in muscle thickness after eight weeks for well-trained men and women. So, long story short, um, when it comes down to hypertrophy, low load, so low weight for higher reps versus high load with the heavier weight has the very, very similar uh, results, outcomes for hypertrophy. Obviously, it's not the same for strength. You cannot, you cannot get stronger lifting uh, light weights for higher reps, but you can still get bigger. So that's very important to understand because, you know, it, at least it made me feel better knowing it because now I can get my head away from thinking that, you know, training body weight or uh, with the uh, light lumbell, dumbbells during the lockdown is not going to be effective. So if our goal is hypertrophy, we can still get a decent uh, result with training with the higher reps and um, you know low light weight. Um, so yeah, that's my that's my little uh, explanation. Um, so what I'm gonna do? I'm going to stop the share. Yeah, there we go. So I don't know, guys, if you got any question. Um, feel free to jump in. I suppose I've got a bit of a question. Where do you draw the line between a um, high rep range and then just sort of moving into cardio? Say, for example, you know, the kind of routine that you might do in like a class, like a sort of a maybe like a crossfit class you know you end up doing really high rep range um but often if the weight's not that high it kind of feels like cardio is there a sort of a cutoff point or is it all kind of the same thing yeah good question so i think the line is a bit blur especially because I think that when you know when the study is being done, um, maybe CrossFit wasn't around or wasn't considered. Um, but it's a very similar concept because that strength and endurance, um, mm. which then you know kind of kind of flows into the you know the big, uh, bigger endurance kind of um, spectrum. Um, what I would say, and you know, again, I, I never went, well, probably went like 25 reps. So I never went into 30 reps, but I've seen, I've seen people doing like purposely uh, like 30, 30 reps, like 30 rep sets. Um, so that, you know, that kind of workout will, will definitely feel a little bit more like cardio because you know you're you you're under construction for you know for a longer time compared to a normal like 10 rep set um but i think okay so because we're looking at muscles right um so actually this is the answer um it depends because it, i think it's two different concepts now that i'm thinking more about it because when we talk about cardio um, you can actually get a cardio effect, which is a uh, elevated heart rate, but even by doing strength uh, based work. Like for example, if I was to, to make you do a heavy five reps on the squat, 
minimal rest into five heavy bench and then back to the squat so we're still working on strength on the muscle side but you will get like a cardio effect which i think is one of that was one of the key points in crossfit for example um because they were trying to get the best of, of both worlds which is actually is a concept that i quite like in a way um but basically you know they, they will get in so okay we can work on the muscle we can get stronger but also fitter at the same time so they bend this you know like muscle because you know muscle work compared to cardio work so it's like people will go and run for the endurance and then lift weights for strength but they were like oh we can do this together so yeah i think it's a little bit different concept like for example um it's different but similar because okay now i'm thinking uh if you see um the cyclist the one that they run on the track uh what's the name uh they run the, they could do the vol velodrome yeah the track cyclists track cyclists yeah so they they got massive quads massive legs mm. so you know for them even the cycling that they do as an hypertrophy uh, results. Mm. So yeah. obviously, you know, we don't measure that in sets and reps, um, but that's, it's so kind of sprint similar. distance, isn't it? It's like short, sharp, kind yeah, of like, so... whereas like an endurance cyclist, like somebody doing, I don't know, like Chris Froome, he's like stick thin. I don't know what his legs look like, but. Yeah. He's not going to be Chris Hoy, is he? Exactly. So obviously, you know, it's a little bit different, but I guess it comes down to, you know, the time under tension and the kind yeah. of intensity. So, which is probably more similar to, you know, the kind of a 20, 25, 30 reps set where basically, you know, you get the lactic build up. And it's like, you know, imagine when you sprint for, I don't know how long the sprint is, but let's say you sprint for two minutes at very high intensity, you know, you'll, you know, you build up so much lactic acid in your leg and that's pretty much the same result that you get if you do like a 20 reps uh, squat mm. or 20 reps leg press. So it's very similar outcome at the level of the muscle, which will bring some, you know, level of hypertrophy as you can see from, you know, from those legs, <laughs> <laughs> from those trunks. <laughs> yeah, especially made jeans. <laughs> so yeah i mean it, again cardio is more on the cardiovascular um side so something that gets your heart rate up um while when we look at you know when we're looking at um, muscle contraction then you know we have the three different energy systems so the lactic uh anaerobic and, and uh, so lactacid, anaerobic, um, and aerobic, yeah. Well, I forgot about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sorry, you can edit that bit out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that's my, that's my short answer. <laughs> So, I mean, part, part of the reason for me asking is because, I mean, in, in a lot of the workouts that, like, you know, you, you designed for me, there's, yeah, definitely the, the heavy weight and the, um, and the sort of moderate weight for the hypertrophy. And then there's like a, like a cardio sort of burst at the end. Yeah. But very rarely there's like a 20 set, 20 rep set. I was just wondering yeah. if the cardio kind of would be equivalent, but you're saying, no, that's just cardio. <laughs> Yeah, also, yes, but also sometimes, and that's, oh, bless you. Um, bless you. <laughs> um, I like to, I like to do that kind of work uh, as well, because you can get pretty much the best of both worlds. And, you know, especially when you use stuff like, you know, like a dumbbell cleaner press. So mm -hmm. you will accumulate, you know, lots of reps on that muscle group, which will 
therefore develop the you know the endurance uh, strength endurance side of the equation um, because also because for example if I in my head if I make you do like a 20 rep set on the biceps and then go and do some rowing you know your, your bicep will like would be destroyed yeah so then instead of doing the 20 rep set on the bicep I might give you the row, which will still get like loads of reps on the same kind of movement. So yeah. it kind of balances out. Um, and I actually like to use those uh, conditioning workouts as a, as a complement. So for example, if I, you know, if I wasn't to do that, then I would probably finish with like a higher rep, uh, biceps or shoulder raise, you know, something like that. Um, yeah. But if I do one, maybe I don't do the other. Because mainly also because of that. Yeah, because I don't want to get too much of the same stimulus. Yeah. Go ahead. But, um, yeah, you're probably going to do more of a higher reps now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking like, you know, for, for leg stuff, you know, whereas in the gym, obviously there's access to, you know, leg press machines and whatever and hack squat or, or, or squat racks and stuff. Whereas at home, I guess most people, you know, they might be able to go to a local hill or something and maybe do some hill sprints. Is that kind of being the equivalent, like in terms of, you know, volume overall, you can, you can lift, you know, 100 and whatever, 80 kgs or something for six reps versus doing 20 hill sprints. Is that kind of... Um kind of so in theory you cannot the, you cannot get the same like strength outcome you know unless you lift heavy yeah, yeah but but you know yes so if you don't have the heavy weight then the next step um perhaps is to build you know kind of a power or a max output then yeah it will be like a, something like that sprints there's actually um it's actually what I, because I made a program recently uh, for a client uh, in Italy. And um, because, you know, it doesn't have any weight. So I was like, okay, what can we do for legs? So I gave him some, you know, higher reps like uh, lunges, squats, and stuff like that. But I also gave him uh, some heel sprints. And um, inspired as well from, you know, the, this cyclist and, you know, sprints in general. And um, I think there is, there is a group. There is a lot of value in uh, sort of a max effort, concentric only work, which is basically you know something like a sprint or a bike sprint. Um, I think it does. I mean, it's it clearly does build the legs. Yeah. So, oh, I don't so know. So if you want to drop a few of those into the next routine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can do that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. find that heel. <laughs> so, well, yeah. the, so thinking of what you said there, Matteo, and is there something about like um, doing squats and then maybe getting on a bike to finish? So we can, if I'm, like I've got a bike at home and I can like rock it down the streets on that. So, is there any merit in doing using weights to do squats to get the, the strength training and then? going out for a ride at the end to sort of build that, to build both of these things together, or should we keep, should we stick to either one type or the other? And there's no point in combining these. Um, so it depends. So for example, uh, if I was going to do the squats and then this, the, the bike, I will probably focus on like sprint. If we're looking at uh, muscle development, um, because if we were, if we were looking at, yeah. um, you know, if we were to do squats and then bike by low intensity, that would be just a normal like cardio and it won't have like a much um, effect on the muscle per se. Or even a better one would be a sprint, like a max, maybe like a 20 second, 30 second sprint on the bike and then do like a max reps, even just body weight squats. You will have so much like uh, lactic acid in the legs that you know it makes a uh, body weight squat 
hard harder yeah so then we can maximize so, those um those you know lactic acid um gains okay because i know i've got so i've got a set of rollers somewhere so uh, i can see me in the car park on my bike sprinting out 20 30 seconds and then hopping off the bike and doing some squats the security guards are going to have a right field day with the cameras on that but that would be quite <laughs> good fun that would be cool actually okay that sounds like a really good one actually take them out <laughs> yeah i'll video it so you can laugh because um yeah obviously you know using the bike is one way but one thing that i like to do when it comes down to legs especially in these situations is like a giant set so like do like lunges uh into squats everything in the slow tempo so basically you know we're trying to maximize that like time under tension uh, perhaps using different exercises but basically all we want to do is build as much lactate as possible into the legs to try to get as much growth as possible um so i know for sure that on legs um this approach works um every muscle you know muscles are different because they have different concentration of muscle fibers so some muscles uh, work better on you know lightweight uh more reps some on the other side but you know, in general, I guess the whole body will benefit from this kind of training overall. And especially if it's only for four weeks, you know, we, we know from, um, from science as well. Science has been proven that, you know, they have the same hypertrophy uh, or, uh, outcome. So, you know, I just wanted to reassure everyone that we're not going to lose the gains. <laughs> Yeah, that's cool. Look, guys, I'm going to have to run. My son's um, about to get in the bath, so I need to go and be a dad. So uh, have a really good evening, guys. Thanks very much, Rateo, and I'll, uh, I'll speak to you in a week. Thank you. Thank Ciao, you guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, nice so in summary, Matteo, as Arnie would say, if it burns, it grows. That's it. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> Easy as that. <laughs> cool, right. Although it's um, yeah, again, I probably started doing more of a higher higher reps work during the first lockdown, mm. and now I'm um, I'm a little bit in love. <laughs> it's your thing. Yeah, I've been doing as well, much, as well as tempo, as well as tempo, of course. Yeah. Um, actually, my this training I was doing lately in the gym, probably. Out of six exercises, four of them I will always finish with a 20 rep set. Like last oh, wow. set, I would drop the way and just do 20 reps on you know on pretty much every exercise. Apart from squats. Is that is that what they call a drop set where you drop the weight? Um so that's one way. Yeah. So you can you know you can do either a drop set. There is actually there is few ways to reach kind of the same outcome. It depends how, how I feel on the day. So that is mm. so what you can do for example let's say you have a way that you do like 12 reps mm -hmm. then on the last set i would say okay i want to get 25 rep, 25 reps but with the same way so what i would do i do the 12 reps i rest 10 seconds i do like whatever i get like six more reps then i'm you know i'm up to 18 then i rest and then i try to get like you know maybe four more I rest and then maybe last day I do like two or three reps until I get to the to like 25 reps, but with the same way. And this is on the like the third or fourth set of your normal. Yeah, just like, yeah, last, yeah. last set I would do like this uh, kamikaze uh, set. <laughs> um, yeah. Or you can do a drop set. So, yeah, same thing, you know, you do maybe the two sets of, you know, 10 to 12 reps. And then last set, um, you do your 12 reps, then you drop the weight. And you keep going and you can mm -hmm. do this once or twice as well normally i do it twice so i do 12 well, drop the way to failure yeah so i normally it goes like this i go 12 reps i drop the way um i get like maybe six reps i drop the way again 
And then I try to go for our max reps again, which normally is delay again, like five to six reps. I don't know why it's, there's always six reps. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and that's, a, I guess, a different way of getting the same periodization, but doing it all in parallel, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Or, um, even just simpler ways. I do my two or three sets of 10 to 12 reps and then I rest and then I get, you know, I go lighter and I do 20 reps with the same way kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's another cool. way. But again, I'm normally strength biased. So I normally try to keep the same way and just do more reps somehow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, psychologically, it seems to, or like ego wise, it seems to appeal more, doesn't it? No, but I, I do, I do, I do go light and do 20 reps. I do, do I do that. Cool. Especially cool. on uh, isolation exercises. I like, like, you know, like a chest fly, yeah, yeah, yeah. dumbbell, you know, bicep curl, lateral raises. Those are, those are good ones. Oh yeah, we can do some of that. That'd be good. Yeah. So no, I'm going to do in, the um, in your case. Um, I'm actually not going to give you a rep range. Okay. Um, so I want you to follow the tempo. Yeah. And actually, it's going to be slow on the way down. Hold at the bottom. Slow on the way up. Hold at the top. So it's going to be slow on the way down and on the way up. Okay. And then okay. just go for max reps. Whether that's 10 or 20, just go for like, you know, as, ma as many reps as you can do following that tempo. And then yeah. you know, we okay. can probably use that as a, um, we can use, you know, those reps, uh, how do you say, as a, as a benchmark. Step, as a benchmark, yeah. So, you know, because yeah, we can't go yeah. heavier. So maybe, you know, you can get like an extra rep. That would be the kind of a, a progress, progress throughout the weeks. So that's another yeah, way yeah. to, 